one likes to harp on the right uh, the right to be secure against unreasonable search and seizure um, yeah. th- that means if the cops are unreasonably searching you you can say no and they're not allowed to um, but that of course most cops don't know that though. the problem with that is once you say no you're giving them probable cause yeah. So, like, they're legally not allowed to check your trunk. If the cops say, open your trunk, you can say no. But the minute you do, they have probable cause and they can tow your vehicle. That's that's a shitty fucking ass-backwards trick that they don't tell you about. Uh, yeah, the, by saying no, you're admitting guilt. Well, you're, you're giving them... You're allowed to say no, but when you do your thing, you're guilty. Well, you're not saying you're guilty. You're just giving them probable cause to assume you may be... And they have, then they now have the right to search you. You know what's fucking crazy? I, I'm slightly, slightly off topic on this one, but um, when I worked for this one company, we had this secretary that, that got hired on. Really, really sweet, really nice lady. And one day, the uh, the boss comes into us and he goes, Hey, have you heard from, what's her name? The, the new secretary, I can't remember her name off the top of my head right now. She goes, You heard from, what's, we'll call her Sally. Uh, you heard from Sally? Like, I work in a fucking shop. How the fuck would I hear from the secretary? No, I haven't fucking heard about it. What's going on? Well, we got a call from the husband. Apparently, the, um, the, uh, some point, uh, in the morning, she, it was like, uh, manic depressive, and she had a bit of a snap in the morning. He just sort of, like, left and disappeared. Nobody's had any contact with her. Nobody knows where she is. She just fucking disappeared. I'm like, holy crap, that's pretty crazy. So, you know, everybody's just sort of on the list and on the lookout for her. Like, that, like, you know, what are we going to do? Leave the store? We're fucking, leave the shop? We're fucking working. But, um, we find out about two hours later that the cops found her car on the side of a highway empty. Like, the main part of the car was empty. Yeah. So they, so they towed the car back to the police station and put it in the impound. Six hours later, one of the guys at the impound was sort of going around, and he thought, well, this is that fucking lady's car. We should check this car for evidence, see if there's something else in the car. Six hours later, so it's now been like 10 hours at this point that this lady's been gone. The guy's going to the main part of the car. He fucking pops the trunk. She's in the trunk. Oh, my God. Almost dead. She had taken a whole bunch of fucking pills, and she was almost dead. And if that guy had not basically done his job and opened up the trunk of the car. She would have died on police property. That would have been messed up. Hey, could you imagine that shit? That's fucked up. That is... Consi- you know, that was crazy. And the cops would have been accused of something, too. And, and rightfully, they should have been. If, if there's a missing person and you find their car abandoned and you're just going to stick the vehicle in an impound lot, you're not going to immediately search the whole fucking car and just look for anything first off the bat? Yeah. What the fuck are you thinking? Like, you have an abandoned car. Open up the fucking trunk. Take a look. Just nah, take a look. We don't care. She's with some guy. She's in a hotel somewhere with some guy. Even though the family said, no, she's made a press this is the first time this happened and she's tried to kill herself before and this is based on sort of how she does it. No, no, no. No, we're not going to bother looking searching the car itself. So. She'll turn up. Uh, they always yeah, do. Yeah, she fucking turned up all right. Here's one that fucking uh, crazy. That's, here's one that everyone has to remember, and not enough people call bullshit on this when the time is right. And uh, there should be more of, of of a public awareness campaign of these ones. A, the right upon uh, arrest to be informed promptly of the reason for your arrest. They have to tell you why they're arresting you. That's right. That's Clearly. Right. Um, they can't say, oh, you know why you're under arrest, something like that. That's No, you, you, they have to tell you why, and they, sometimes they don't know why, so it's good to bring it up at the time. You have the right... They cannot give you a valid reason for why you are being arrested. You are not being arrested. You're being kidnapped. You have the right to retain and instruct counsel without delay and to be informed of that right. They have to tell you that, if you don't know already, that you can demand a lawyer immediately. Yep. You can also demand that, uh, you can demand habeas corpus, which means you have to be brought before a judge immediately, and the judge has to decide if you should have been arrested or not. You can demand that. 
Um, that's why you don't, generally you won't find a judge that'll come in until Monday morning. So try not to get arrested until Sunday night. Yeah. Um, cause or you go, if you can, Monday morning. <laughs> it's uh, very, very hard to, to it's uh, damn near impossible as far as I know to get a judge out of the bed on the weekend to come do that for you. Um, so you, you end up doing the weekend anyway. But not enough people say, wait a minute. I, I don't think this is right. And I think a judge should decide if I should be here or not. And uh, and that's your right. You can do that. Do it. Do it anyway. It's your right. Yeah. Do it even if you think it's fine. At least you get out of your cell for a few hours and you're in the courthouse instead of the jail cell. Because we all know jail cells are just good fun time hanging out there. Now, these are the ones where nasty lawyer tricks get involved, but they are our rights as Canadians. You have the right to be informed without unreasonable delay of the specific offense, and you have the right to be tried within a reasonable time. Now, reasonable time for that has dramatically changed. I, Because I don't know what considered as reasonable time, because I know of people who have been sitting in, like, in a like, for, wait for court for like three to five years. And that's why you get you get double time... It, uh, credit for the amount of time you wait um, for your trial to start. Yeah, but that should only apply if if your court case gets delayed by, like, if you're sitting in jail the whole time. Yes, double time, the whole time you're waiting. I, I can understand that. But if you're not in jail and you're waiting for a court case and then you get found guilty because you're out on fucking bail, then you get found guilty. No, you've been free. Go fuck your hat. You've been free this whole time. You don't get fucking double time for the fucking just because you've been hanging around a fucking home this whole time, knowing you're a piece of shit fucking dirtbag and you got away with shit until they finally fucking got up all the evidence against you that they can charge. So no. Uh, another. If you're in jail, yes. If you're not in jail for the fucking for the waiting period, then go fuck yourself. The fuck of that does not apply. There's uh, another one that's really important. Um, you cannot be found guilty on account of any act of omission. You can't be punished for what you don't say. Unless... How it, does that work? Uh, that's pleading the fifth, basically, is what they call it in the U.S. You, that's, your, that's the U.S. Fifth Amendment, which means, oh, I, I plead the fifth. You've heard that saying? I have. That means you're not saying. And you cannot be found guilty of what you don't say unless it's an offense under international law or it was or or was criminal according to uh, the general principles of law like like uh, uh, it's hard to say what a good example of that would be but basically you can't if you say no I'm not telling you that's not that's not illegal it's you can't be punished for not telling the cops that you saw a crime happen. Yeah, that's true. It's basically you can't be punished for not ratting. <laughs> um, not being a rat is not illegal. Um, if you in the U.S. they say I'm taking the fifth. In Canada, you can't say that because it's not our Fifth Amendment. It's our Eleventh Charter, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little farther down the list, but that's okay. I, I'm taking my eleven D. Oh, G. Sorry, I'm taking my eleven G. <laughs> I plead the 11G. I plead the 11G. Uh, yeah, so... The you guys going, fuck, wait, what is that one? Hang on, let's grab the ball. <laughs> but out here on the streets, that's something to remember, kids, and uh, everybody. When the police are talking to you, you don't have to tell them anything. It's not illegal to not tell them. They can't punish you if you say, I didn't see nothing. That's right. Um, so don't let them compel you. To say you're all... They you're, can you're, punish you. If they, if you say I didn't see nothing, but then they have evidence that you did see something, and then withheld that information, no, nope. you can be charged. You 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 can you can be charged for uh, um, if you mislead them. The yeah, but you're not lying if you. Well, I guess if you're lying, if they find out that yes, indeed, you're definitely lying, then sure, you can get charged for lying. Don't lie to them. Um, too much, I guess is uh. The advice there, but if you <laughs> um, don't say you were somewhere else, and that's why you didn't see it, that'd be a lie. But just yeah, that's, if, that's a lie. I blinked and I missed it. Prove that I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a lie. I 
Uh, and that goes hand in hand with uh, you. You have the right um, not to have incriminating evidence um, given to incriminate a witness in any other proceeding, unless it's perjury. Like so, if if someone if you're on trial for something, and someone in another trial can't can't like get off by incriminating you. Oh. Like, if, if I present evidence in my trial that makes you look guilty for what I did, <laughs> they can't use that against you at your trial. That's not... If it's going... You know you know what I'm trying to say there? Isn't that, yeah, but isn't that what pretty much every convict does? And, like, like, also you can't say... Like, they can't punish you for incriminating yourself. You know, like, if you go, yeah, I know he did it. Well, how do you know he did it? Well, I fucking did it with him. They, I guess that would be a confession. That's not... Don't do that. But, um... And this also isn't a, a class on how to get out of, uh, you know, being responsible for crime. That's not what I'm trying to say here, either. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of starting to sound like it. <laughs> well, I just want people to understand that you have the rights to not get screwed over by these people. They can't force you into something. Again, this goes right back to the base of what I said. If it feels icky it probably is and if you feel like the cops are pushing you into doing something you don't have to do they probably are yeah um because cops are scumbags for the most part some of them are very very good people and very great at their job and a lot of them are not they're scumbags who wanted a job where they get to where they get a gun but they didn't want to be in the army they wanted to fuck with bullies so they got guns and now they... Or they were bullies, and now that they can't fuck with anybody, they want to continue being the bully, so they become a cop. Exactly. Um, that was actually a great line in the fucking Harold and Kumar fucking first movie. Uh, when uh, the cop fucking uh, 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 get, gets them for jaywalking, and the guy comes out just like, you're very atypical fucking dickhead cop, and starts basically mocking their name, uh, you know, because he's what, 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 what's your name? And the guy says his name. He's like, yeah, really? You sure it's not Ping Pang? Because he's Asian? You know, the guy says, yeah. your name? He goes, Kumar. And he, and he goes, Kumar. Kumar, what the fuck kind of a name is that? He sure it's not Muhammad. Uh, so Kumar fucking like, just jumps down his throat, basically says, you, know, you are probably a fucking, like a bully in high school. He's like, yeah, I was. He goes, yeah, and then nobody fucking liked you. You became an asshole. And you were like, how can they fuck with people? So you became a cop. Guy's like, yep. He goes, yeah, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> Boom, they're both in jail. <laughs> um, now one that's uh, really funny in Canada that you can do and I have I hand to God I've done this myself English and French are the official languages of Canada and have equality of status and equal rights and privileges as to their use in all institutions of the Parliament and Government of Canada that means no matter what, no matter where you are, if you're in a government office or you're speaking to a government official, you have the right that they to demand that they speak to you in French. You can do that anywhere, talking to anybody who works for the government, including the police. You can say, no, I would prefer to be served in French, and they have to accommodate that. Whether you speak French or not is a completely different issue. So you want if you if you got some time to waste, you can tell the cop, no, 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 en français s'il vous plaît, and they gotta rush around trying to find a French cop on shift. It'll take them hours. It's hilarious. <laughs> then when he finally shows up, what are you saying? Why are you speaking? Yeah, you sit there and go, what? <laughs> and they have to then find you an English cop because it's illegal for you to not understand your rights. That's right. It's your right to fully understand your right. It's so great. <laughs> it is a great... You have to have the time to waste because they're not just going to let you go. Um, you're going to end up sitting there while they find the French cop and then they're the, you, you know waste the French cop's time. Like, they're not going to be happy with you when you're done. But uh, no matter what you've done, they will find a reason for you to go to fucking jail. Oh yeah, unless you're you get unlucky and you happen to run into one of the three cops in Canada that speaks French. That would be my problem. I did, in fact, in North Vancouver, I got I got held up. I decided to do that for it was just a bylaw infraction, right? It was an open liquor uh, ticket. 
but I pulled that and the cop walked up and just railed off in perfect French. No idea.